What's up, Vikings fans? We are continuing our position-by-position position breakdown coverage on the current Vikings roster. And as always, my man, Vikings analyst, Ben Lieber is here to share his thoughts on the team. If you missed his breakdowns on the quarterback and wide receiver position, make sure you head on over to Vikings.com after you check out this video. Because today, Ben, we're discussing both the running backs and tight end positions, starting with the running backs and the leader of that room, Dalvin Cook. Dalvin, well, Gabe, it's so good to see you again. It's always fun to open up my computer and see your smiling face. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I mean, these, this two, these two position groups are uh, are pretty solid, man. You know, you look at you look at everything, and um, you talk about Dalvin Cook. Hand off, Dalvin Cook makes a man miss. He has a safety to beat. It's Darnell Savage, and he beat him. Dalvin Cook to the thirty. That is a loose touchdown. As the running back, I think everybody wants to know how is he gonna how is he gonna play this year when it comes to durability. How many games is he gonna be able to play? Uh, he plays so violently. He runs so violently. It's very understandable why he gets banged up a little bit. But you know, he's the guy. You know, this is an offense where they've always said we're gonna run the ball first. We have to use play action. We have to get Kirk uh, outside of the pocket off of these run fakes. And, and he's the guy that I think strikes a lot of fear in these defenses because he has such a, uh, an innate ability to create things out of nothing. You know, we've seen time and time again, uh, the offensive line, maybe he can't get the job done and there's a, there's a tight little hole, a tight window, and he's able to kind of turn his shoulders and kind of squeak through there. And all of a sudden with that vision and quickness, make another guy miss and turn maybe what would be a tackle for loss into a, a, into a nice, you know, six, seven yard game. Vikings were sixth best in the NFL last year in rushing offense, rushing touchdowns last season. Uh, like we were talking about, Dalvin Cook had a lot to do with that success. But question for you, if Dalvin Cook has the same exact season that he had last year, um, we're talking about 1,135 yards, 13 touchdowns. Is is that good enough for the Vikings? Well, you know what? I think we'd all like to see a little bit more production. I mean, you're, you're talking about a fan base that's, that's watched Adrian Peterson for a lot of years and, you know, <laughs> You know, uh, rack up a few more yards than that, but but where I where I think that he can make up for that and compensate maybe for less rushing yards is the receiving yards. You know, that's that's something that Adrian just didn't do very much. He he was he was trying to be a three down back, but you look at Dalvin's comparison uh, from 2018 to 2019 when it comes to yards per catch. Now we're talking about just reception, screen game, things out to the flat. He increased that production by two yards per catch. Now, that doesn't seem like much, but you, when you're looking at almost 9.7 yards a reception, that's almost a first down every time he catches the football. <laughs> so that is that is huge. You know, a two-yard increase goes from the high sevens to almost 10 yards a catch. That's where he can make up, and that's where he can be dangerous. And, uh, you know, I, I think we get so enamored by numbers and rushing numbers and, and all that stuff, but – what he can provide on a three-down basis is phenomenal. And I, and I think that is still going to increase in 2020. Alexander Madison, in my opinion, looks primed to have another big season in 2020. Uh, he stepped up big time last year when Dalvin Cook went down. But year two for him, what are you expecting from him? How, what are you expecting from him? How can he make that next step uh, in his career? Look at the stages of Alexander Madison from as the year went on. You saw this guy in the preseason who looked, quite honestly, kind of a like a plotter. You know, it was like, oh, you know, he seems like just like a power back, a bigger back. You know, is that what we're going to see out of him? You didn't see a lot of dynamic ability. Then all of a sudden, week one of the regular season starts, and you're like, whoa, well, who is this guy? Like, <laughs> he, he's, he's picking up his feet much better. He looks quicker. He looks more fluid. He looks more agile. And then as the season goes on, you could see him just kind of relax and get more comfortable. And now he's running He's running with much better vision. His cuts are cleaner. He's breaking tackles. Um, I think that this is gonna be, as every player from the first year to the second year, this should be a huge jumping out point, a huge springboard opportunity. And I think that he's gonna have a big year. Rounding out the running back group, Amir Abdullah, who was used a lot on special teams last year. Mike Boone, who came in and made some plays. Then you got Tony Brooks-James. 
how can these guys add benefit, you know, this upcoming year and, you know, figure out their role and how to complement guys like Dalvin Cook and then Alexander Madison, who looks like he's RB2 right now? Yeah, and that's when I, I started this whole discussion saying I think it's, you know, one and two are pretty much locked in. Now, now RB3 and RB4, um, you know, that's going to come down to special teams. Um, you know, sure. They bring in Tony Brooks James, who had an outstanding career at Oregon, mostly as a rotational running back and as a return guy. Uh, the one year last year with Pittsburgh, you know, very limited duties. But I think he's going to come in and push on the return side of things. If he can push... Amir Abdul on the return side, there's going to be some heavy, heavy competition for that roster spot. Mike Boone had a lot of opportunity last year. He got some great, great snaps, some quality snaps in the course of the year. And, you know, I I, I think I, I was marginally disappointed with him as a running back because he just didn't show the vision that I thought uh, you need to, to, to play in this league. He runs hard. I think he surprises a lot of people in preseason, but he's really going to have to come out and step up in this preseason in training camp and show that he's increased his vision. Um, he can make something out of nothing and he can be that RB three. Now he makes a lot of tackles on special teams. Um, yeah. You know, he's one of those guys that will run down and, and tackle people. He's not just a return guy. So it's an, it's an interesting contrast between if you look at just RB three, you've got Mike Boone who, can run hard as a, as a running back, can be that guy, can make tackles on special teams. But then the other two guys, returnability is, is, a, is a major factor. And, and that's just something that Mike uh, has not shown to do yet. And Ben, we can't go any further. We can't go to the tight ends before we talk about C.J. Ham, a guy that was a pro bowler last year. I mean, he just does so much in the run game, the pass game, and on special teams. How important is he to this roster? He's huge, you know. the The hammer is he's a big part of this offense, and and I love to see it because uh, a lot of the NFL teams are getting rid of fullbacks, and you know this is one offense where a guy like that can thrive. And is he a fullback? Is he an H back? You know what is he? And I and I love the fact that he has that flexibility. He has that position flexibility where, you know, he can be the lead. He can be the lead running back. Uh, blocking for Dalvin or Alexander, and he's going to pop you. He's going to hit you. Uh, he's not afraid uh, to stick his nose in there. And then he's also going to be a guy that's going to go out in the flat and catch a pass. And then you're going to see him run down on punt team or kickoff team and, and make a tackle. So uh, he's a guy that just loves the game. And I think you, you talk to the players around, and they said not only is he productive on the field, but you know he's a great guy off the field and a tremendous leader with everything, when it comes to film work, when it comes to just how to be a pro. Um, I love his story. I love everything about CJ. And um, and I think that he's he's big for this offense. Because again, just like just like I talked about with um, with our tight end situation, and we, we've got 12 personnel, we've got 13 personnel. We've, now we've got, you can have two running backs, two tight ends, and still explode out of the formation. And now you've got the defense Oh, oh, who do you got? Like, which which guy are you going to line up on? And, yeah. you know, just given that that flexibility is a, is a dangerous weapon. Moving on to the tight end position, statistically, last season was not Kyle Rudolph's best season, but he always seems to make the big plays in those big moments. In year 10, how important is Kyle Rudolph to this offense? Well, he's still a major factor in this offense. You know, you look at stats and you talk about his down year. It's the lowest receiving totals that he's had since 2014. And, um, again, numbers are numbers, but he's had some pretty iconic catches last year. Kirk takes the snap, looks right, fade left, end zone, and it is caught! Touchdown! You know, one of which goes down in the history books, you know, and and... He, he shows this ability that he can make tough catches in traffic, you know, showing off those big mitts, you know, one of the most reliable pass catchers, not just tight ends, but reliable pass catchers in the NFL. So he's still going to be the guy, but he needs to take that step into helping Herb Smith become the next great tight end for the Minnesota Vikings. And, and can he be productive? Yeah, he can be. In the red zone, most importantly, he's a huge target. He's He might be the number one guy to look for in the red zone. In the field of play, I think he's going to take another step back and they're going to allow Irv Smith to maybe be that guy uh, that can be the guy, the tight end in the field, breaking tackles and, uh, and, and create more production there.
Texans. Speaking of Irv Smith, he's a guy that you can do so much with when he's on the field. I mean, you can flex him out to a wide receiver position. You can have him in. I mean, he can pretty much do anything that you need to do. For me, that's one of my favorite players on this offense because of his uh, variability and things that he can do. I mean, just at any position. How excited are you for him in year two? I'm really excited because sort of like Alexander Madison, you saw him sort of take this collective deep breath with every game as the season went on. You know, I think he got more comfortable. He understands where he's supposed to be. I think, I, I don't think people understand how tough it is to play tight end in, in the NFL. You've got to do everything. You've got to know all the offensive line blocking schemes. You've got to be in lockstep in communication with the offensive tackles. And then they, they say, all right, on third down, we need you now to be a receiver. you got to break down coverages. you got to understand where linebackers are. you got to call out hots and blitzes. You have to do everything. You're, you're a, a jack of all trades on the field. And it, and it takes a while to get comfortable and to get used to the speed of the game, the processing, the mental processing. I thought he played so much faster towards the end of the season. And again, I, I think that he's really going to benefit uh, from more classroom work and looking back on his film and saying like, hey, man, I, I can do this. Like, I can mm -hmm. process fast. I know how to play. I know I can catch and run. He's going to put it all together this year and be a be heck of a weapon. With we were talking in our, in our last breakdown of wide receivers, we were talking about the, some of the inexperience on, in the wide receiver position. Twelve receivers on the Vikings roster right now. Only four of those guys have played elite in at least five games last season. Does this put more, you know, does this give you know Earl Smith Jr. more opportunity to in, in that pass game? I know we're going to use we're going to need him, you know, in the box, you know, blocking as a tight end, you know, next to the tackle. But does this open up more opportunities for him in the receiving game due to this inexperience of wide receiver? Yeah, for sure. And I think definitely in the first quarter of the season when you're going to rely on your veteran guys, you know, there's there's a lot of youth at the wide receiver position. You would expect those guys to take the, the progression a little slower uh, and not rely on those guys right away. That being said, you're going to see continue to see a lot of 12 personnel, two tight ends on the field. And I and I love that personnel grouping as a defensive player because it's hard. It's hard to match up. You know, you traditionally you'd, you'd see 12 personnel and it's a running situation, but now in the modern NFL, 12 personnel with, with athletic tight ends, you don't know if you're gonna have a, all three linebackers on the field. You don't know, know if you're gonna, you're gonna call on your nickel. You don't know if you're gonna have a big safety on those guys. So it, it really puts the defenses in a bind if you can stay in 12 personnel and, and bring the guys in the box or flex them out and treat them like receivers. Um, I think those two guys are going to be huge for this offense, especially early in the, early in the season. Ben, thank you. Looking forward to a, a great year by this tight end group. Vikings fans, stay tuned because we got more position by position breakdown coverage. Stay tuned to Vikings.com. We got more coming for you.